track yet for there. It wasn't until 2011 that they really did a, a big bike redesign and they hired Roger DeCoster to come in and run their race team, which that was huge. Uh, you know, with Suzuki doing so well and Roger DeCoster running that, I mean, it was, it was like taking away the Super Bowl coach and bringing him over to a different team. So bringing him over was huge and he brought over Ryan Dungey with him when he came over. And part of the agreement was that they were going to begin developing the bike more and really putting time into making a race bike. And when 2012 came around, when the bike was released, everyone was expecting fuel injection and just ne the, next, the next level. And it wasn't. As soon as the bike was released, the rumor mill already began and speculation was that they already had a new bike uh, in development. And when the 2012 Supercross came around, Ryan Dungey was not on a production 2012 bike. There were some well, big changes, uh, including the motor going from sandcast to diecast uh, engine components, or I guess engine casings, which lost four and a half pounds. Uh, they went over to these more forgiving, uh, was it the uh, XCW frame? Here's the EXE, yeah, XCW. They went over to the off-road frame instead of the Supercross frame, and the bike gained fuel injection, which everybody was waiting for. Uh, and then in order to homologate that bike, they had to sell 400 units, and uh, 200 of them had to be sold or released and available to the public by March 1st. So, as it would be, March 1st rolled around and 200 units were available around the United States. Uh, and then another couple months later, they would release the next 200, and that's it. Uh, and since 2012, KTM has de been developing two bikes a year, uh, which allows them to pretty much have like almost a brand new bike for Supercross and then a brand new bike for the outdoors, which it doesn't get better than that. I mean, they're by that that's why right now, in my opinion, they make the best bike. brought in Marvin Muscan and Ken Roxon to do the 250 class uh, development and what that brought us to is by 2016 and a half uh, is they really perfected the machine uh, at this point from 2017 and 2018 they didn't really change very much on the bike the motor stayed pretty much the same the only changes uh, they made were internals to the suspension to the air fork which you can do yourself or send your suspension out to your favorite suspension guy, whoever it is, and uh, have them update it and you have up-to-date suspension. They also changed the motor mounts from a steel to an aluminum mount. Gave it more flex and made it a little bit more forgiving, um, which you can also change yourself. So really up to 2018, you can update a 2016 and a half and have a 2018 and a half bike. Uh, and then in 2019 and 2020, the only big changes they make have been some uh, plastic changes which really just set the bike back. They've developed the bike so well that they're taking back steps just, trying, just to try and figure out how to make it faster. If you don't have a 2016 and a half and you want uh, just an amazing bike for the track and you can find a 2016 and a half, 
get it. Uh, if you can't and you have to buy one of the newer ones, obviously they've made little changes that you won't have to make and it would be worth buying. But if you have a 2016 and a half, it's not worth upgrading yet and I would say keep it. Let's do it.